Kia ora everyone. Are we paying too much for electricity? Are you? John Key thought so when he was in opposition. Labor thinks so too. Now they're in opposition. But governments tend to take the money and look the other way. Tonight we hear from an economist who says power companies are charging too much, full stop, hell bent on returning a profit to the government, whichever colour they are. And just today, Meridian posted a half year after tax profit of $173 million. $100 million of that goes to the government. But that we're being ripped off somehow is a serious claim. So serious, the Electricity Authority has just announced it's investigating. Rebecca Wright has the story. It looks like any other house in a suburban street, but behind these four walls lies the very latest in energy efficiency technology and freedom from the power companies. It's one of the largest domestic solar electric systems in New Zealand, generating 90% of its own power using photovoltaic cells on the roof. With the way the sun comes in, we want to be able to take that sun and bring it into the house. And then in the winter months, we want to be able to say, have a fire going that gives us the aesthetics, but also tie that in so that's also heating our hot water when the sun's not shining as much. Uh, when it comes to technology, it's looking at um, what's the latest at the moment that's the most energy efficient. They certainly haven't compromised on size. No, haven't compromised on size. Using a separate bank of hot water panels, Simon and Christina Cope produce their hot water for showers, underfloor heating and radiators. Heavily insulated the internal walls right. and between levels and then under the floor. So take me to the heart of your energy efficient home. So how much does it cost to run the Cope household? Tell me what you're paying on power for over the whole year. So over the whole year, it works out about $26 a month. Across the back fence, though, it's quite a different story for Louise Maru and her family. How much do you pay for your power every month? Uh, 180 uh, about a month, yeah. And uh, does that go up in winter at all? Yes, it does. It goes about, about $36, yeah. And how many bedrooms is your home? It's a five-bedroom home, yep. Very definitely you're being rotted. Economist Jeff Bertram believes Kiwis like Louise are being ripped off by the power companies. If you take an industry which has a lot of power um, to uh, potentially exploit consumers, you remove regulation and you give its managers a profit goal, you end up with what we have, which is just steady price gouging of residentials. That's right, price gouging. They're strong words, but Bertram says he has the evidence to prove it. I took the International Energy Agency's database, compared the price trends from 1986 to the present. In New Zealand, the real price of electricity to residential customers has doubled over that period. None of the other OECD countries have anything like that. And it's not business or industry paying the price, it's you and I, residential consumers. It's households who have seen the price drive up. And it's households from whom the companies get their, their very large profits, primarily. Is that uh, fair? No, it's not fair. The problem, according to Bertram, is New Zealand doesn't have an effective regulator. And the Electricity Authority, which is there to manage, the, to oversee the market, they're not a regulator as usually understood. They, they don't actually put any brake on prices directly. So Kiwi households have to work smarter and negotiate harder for lower power prices, just like big business. You start by looking at the aluminium smelter down at Bluff. Uh, it used to be Comalco, it's now Rio Tinto. They get their electricity very cheaply because they've signed a contract. That contract runs for a long period, it says they have a big chunk of power, uh, they pay a fixed price. Bertram believes that every Kiwi household should be entitled to 300 kilowatt hours of free power every month. Yes, that's right, free. 300 kilowatt hours makes a big dent in their consumption, you know, the, the cooking, the fridge, the heating, the hot water. It would save the average household $1,000 a year, but it's unlikely his idea will find favour among the power companies, none of whom would talk to us about the price of power today. Nor would the Minister of Energy and its politicians that Bertram reserves his harshest criticism for. It's entirely down to political decisions made by 
all the governments really since the 1980s, um, so that's Labor and national governments alike, um, have basically turned their back on residential consumer interests. And the pursuit of profit is leading power companies away from their core business and into much riskier areas of investment, according to The Economist. Profits from viable parts of the business are siphoned off to support riskier investments, behaviour which has already been observed in solid energy, now on the brink of a bailout. The question is how many of these SOEs are acting more like merchant bankers than power utilities? Could we have an Enron type scenario here in New Zealand? Yes, yes, we, this, these could crash and burn. Shouldn't, shouldn't our politicians be worried by that? Yes, they should. Should we be worried by that? Yes, we should. And what should we be doing about it? Uh, I suspect you probably will have to elect politicians who are worried. And if you can find some, good luck. But Simon Cope isn't going to wait around for that to happen. Rebecca Wright reporting. We're going to keep looking at the issue of power prices in this country. A shocking accident happened just down the road from our studios this morning. A woman.